Hi. Recently I did a video about packing and the things that I take and I mentioned at that time that we as a family, especially my husband and I, just do carry on only the entire trip no matter what, no matter where, that kind of thing. And many people were flabbergasted by that and I just have a quick explanation why I've, I've mentioned it before. So. If you've heard this already, sorry. Um, we had about four different trips overseas and, and, and not um, in maybe the span of two years where our luggage was lost. Um, I think the kicker, the last one that we got completely fed up by the whole thing was when we flew to St. Lucia and we arrived, I think, on a Saturday. No, yes, we arrived on a Saturday and we did not get any of our luggage until I believe it was Monday or Tuesday. We were scrounging and scrambling for anything to wear. Um, it was bad. And we only got our luggage then because we had to fight and, you know, call constantly and have them try to, we had to actually suggest that they put it on another flight to get it there because the next flight come, they think, oh, no worries, the next flight will be there next Saturday. Well, that's the entire week we're planning to leave then. <laughs> so we couldn't, you know, get our luggage that day. So it, it was just kind of like, okay, I just sort of want to keep my things with me from now on. And it was a huge learning curve trying to figure that out. Soon after that, we went to Amsterdam for a week and that was during a time where we needed a lot of sweaters and jackets and things. Um, so the clothing items were bulkier, which made it even crazier. So I've learned and we've all learned um, how over the years pretty much how to make it work with just your carry-on. So what I wanted to do is I have a trip coming up in about a month or so that I will be going overseas and I'll be going pretty far away. It's a 13 hour flight. So it's going to be a far, far place with like almost no regular normal, you know, like chain type no target, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. So if I don't have something that I need, I'll be able to find something to make do, but it won't be like, you know, I'm not going to someplace that has everything that I could normally buy. So I really have to be careful um, and choose carefully what I'm wearing, what I'm not, how to mix and match and so forth. So since that's happening in about a month or so, um, I will be working toward figuring out what to pack. It's going to be a warm weather place. I haven't worn any of my warm weather clothing in so long I don't even know what still fits and what's still in good condition. So I have to go through all of my things and figure that out before I even consider what in the world I'm gonna pack and how I'm gonna mix and match it. But once I do, I'll bring you along on that journey with me to show you how I'm packing, how I'm going to plan to mix and match for different events and whatnot, and how I get it all into one carry-on bag plus the little personal item that goes on the plane too. But in the meantime, long intro. In the meantime, I wanted to let you know what I feel are the pros and cons of carry on only. There are, in my opinion, more pros than cons only because I've had these issues before um, many times. My bag was lost going from Paris to Barcelona. Someone rifled through it, stole a Louis Vuitton bag. Um, no, I should not have had that in there, but you can only carry so much with you on the plane and I had already purchased a different one in Paris. So I have that with me as much as I could take. It was a, like a 45 minute flight. I thought there's no way that'll, you know, it's, it's boom, boom stolen, lost and stolen. I was wearing my husband's shirt the whole first day in Barcelona with pants from the day before because I was waiting for my luggage. So anyway, super long story, still long. That's my gig and that is why I do what I do. So let's talk about the pros and cons of carry on only. First of all, I think I want to talk about the pros because to me there are more pros than cons. At first you want to freak out. Um, especially if you're one of those people that tends to chronically overpack. If you're one that just sort of wants to have a ton of options, you don't know what you're going to want, you don't really feel like you know, and you're going to be so worried that you'll leave something at home that you wish you had. There's that, and that's definitely a thing. I have gone through that myself. And then after the second or third trip doing this, you realize you really didn't need that thing. You're fine. You know what I mean? At least for me, that's the way it was. All of this is just my opinion, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of a learning curve and it, it's, it's something that you kind of have to switch your brain around a little bit on. You know what I mean? You have to kind of change your thinking a little bit and once that clicks in, then you'll be much happier and you'll be so relieved. So my first, I have a list, so I, I just don't want to forget anything. My first list uh, item for pros is it forces you to consolidate and think it through. Every single item you place in that bag is important for one, two, maybe three different reasons. So therefore, you're not overpacking, you're not dragging a bunch of items all over Europe or wherever that you really didn't need and you came home and you have this stack of shirts you never wore. 
Um, that has happened to me many times. I didn't really need that many accessories, whatever. You know, it just, it kind of forces you to think it through. What can I wear with that? Well, how can I mix and match and get through what I need to get through feeling comfortable and confident in what I have with me, but it lends itself to many different outfits and many different choices. That's pretty much what you have to do. Um, and I have my, my ways of doing that. I will talk about that in another video, but for now we're just doing pros and cons. So first pro is it forces you to consolidate and think it through before you place any item in that bag. And it makes mixing and matching your outfits easy. If you kind of, hi baby, I know. My grand puppy wants me to play with her. Hi baby, I know, I know. Ah, yeah, bugger, you little bugger. Oh, I, if I can get this apple out of her mouth, I can throw it. So basically what I try to do is get outfits together that have a generalized similar color scheme and you can mix and match from there and it's wonderful. But again, I'll more on that later. So the pro in doing that is that once you arrive at your destination, you only have a certain amount of things to choose from. They all kind of mix and match. It makes getting up in the day, you know, the next day so, so simple. Sorry. And um, so easy to do because you, you can just grab this, that, and that, and you know they go together. And then it got, gets warmer, so you take off that sweater and, and put on those shorts and it still all goes together, you know? And that just makes getting dressed in the day <laughs> way, way easier um, than if you had 800,000 outfit choices and things in your suitcase. Another pro for the whole thing is that it's much easier to schlep your stuff around. You're not dealing with a giant suitcase over cobblestones like we did once in Venice. That was not easy. Um, you're not dealing with uh, trying to lift it all up and out of a car trunk, you know, the trunk of your car or a taxi or whatever it is you're using. You have a much smaller bag you're dealing with, easier to carry, carry, put up into the overhead compartment. Um, everything is just simpler. And you're walking through the airport with another heavy kind of a carry-on sort of a bag, like your personal item that might have other things in it. And so you just place that on top of your other roller bag and you go. And it's so easy. You're not carrying some other heavy thing all the way through the airport to your far, far gate way over there. So that's another thing I really like about it. Easy schlepping things around. Now, this is a biggie. No waiting and wondering at baggage claim. If you've never been through a situation where you've waited through all the luggage to come around the pike and you don't see yours and your heart just drops and you panic and you've just arrived at your destination and you have things to do, places to go, people to see, you feel like a mess from being on the plane for that long and you have no idea where your luggage is. That is the worst. And then the first couple days of your vacation is spent calling constantly to the airport, hoping to hear about your bags, trying to like scrounge for things to get through. It's not, it's not fun. And like, like I say, once you've had that happen, one, two, three, possibly four or more times, you just are so much happier eliminating that step. The plane lands, you get your bag down, you go straight to wherever you're going and you start enjoying your vacation with the things that you know you love, you know that they fit and it's all good. <laughs> Another pro is that your bag is constantly with you. No chance of items being stolen. You can take your really cute toiletry thing from Louis Vuitton if you want to. Um, you know, things like that. You don't have to worry so much about all the different items or your really cool shoes that you wanted to bring with you, that kind of thing. Um, however, I do want to caution you. And the reason is because there have been many times that I have been on, especially a small plane, jumping from here and there, and it's supposed to be able to go on the plane, but depending on whatever, they might still take it at, take it from you at the gate. And you don't know where it is at that point. That's rare. It doesn't happen very often, but it has happened to me several times. And if I had a Louis Vuitton roller bag with me, something like that, and that happened and they take it away, I would just be so worried the whole time and I don't want that in my life. So just because the bag does is considered a carry-on size doesn't mean you're always going to be able to carry it on. But, you know, nine times out of... Well, no, 90 times out of 100, you will. Another pro in my mind is that the whole process is so much easier. Once you've narrowed down the items that you need, the items that you can mix and match, and you've got your core, this is what I can work with for one week or whatever it is, it's easy because it's easy getting the items to and from where you're going. It's easy not having to go to baggage claim. It's easy getting it to be able to put it in the trunk of whatever car you're renting. It's easy getting to and from the hotel rooms and whatever. It's easy choosing your outfits because there's less to choose from. It all goes with each other. Everything mix and matches perfectly. And you've curated it down to that perfect science. Add the heels, add the flip flops, change the shirt, you're done. You can make it fancier, whatever. 
that makes it so much easier getting ready every day. Um, the whole idea behind it is easy, less worry and simple. And that's to me, the biggest pro it takes, like I say, there's a learning curve in the first couple trips. You're, you're going to you know, live and learn, but I will give you all of my tips when I do my packing for the upcoming trip. So now we have the cons. And first and foremost, the first thing on everyone's mind would be, I can't take everything I want. And that's true. Let's just boil it straight down. You can't. Um, you definitely, definitely need to get good at choosing your very favorite pieces and mixing and matching. That's all I can say. Um, once you've done that, it's golden. You're good to go. But if you have so many different things and they're of different color schemes and different designs and different styles, and you've got some bohemian outfit you love, and then you have some, you know, Chanel classic looking thing that you have and blah, 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 blah. And you're kind of fashionista that way. It's not going to be easy for you. And if you, you can still do it, but it takes more thought and a lot of narrowing down. And that's all there is to it. So that is a con. You just can't quite be, you know, full outfit looking completely different every single day. Um, and that's, that, that's definitely a con. The other thing is you definitely need to limit your liquids. For TSA in the United States, you need three ounces, all fitting in a quart size bag or that fantastic um, TSA approved carry on bag thing that I have um, that I've shown in other videos and I will link it somewhere probably below. But um, that thing is wonderful, so much fits in it. But basically still, you are limited to three ounces. Now I don't have to bring shampoo and conditioner and soap, things like that, because I have never really stayed in a place that hasn't had that available to me and I can go a week using a different shampoo. You know, I mean, it may not be make my hair look the best it's ever looked, but it's fine. So personally, I don't need that, which really keeps the room even better. If you don't need contact solution, whatever, it even makes it better. So if you can find tiny little trial sizes or trial things or get the little containers that you can put a larger amount into a smaller amount to take with you, that's how you do it. You choose the things that you really need the most and you'd be amazed at how well you can do with just a few of your favorite items and you don't really need 16 toners and 14 this and whatever, at least for a week or two, you can, you'll be fine without it. And it's kind of a nice learning curve to realize that about yourself and your, your, your routine. Um, so there's that you definitely, the con is that you have to narrow that down now, many, many times, if I know I'm going to need more hairspray, let's say, or something, I can bring two or three little bottles. And once one spray is done, I throw that one away and it even leaves more space. Um, or you can just pop over to your nearest pharmacy, target, um, chemist, you know, wherever you're at, wherever you are in the world and you can purchase something and it's not the end of the world. Um, no, it's not your favorite brand, but it will work. It will get you through and you'll be fine. Focus on what you're doing and what you're seeing more than how you look and that your hair is not just, you know, the way you'd like it to be perfectly, I guess. Um, however, that is a con because you may have to do that if there's something that you really, really want that you just can't find a way to bring enough of if you do carry on. Another con is that it's definitely a lot more difficult if your stay is longer, if you're staying for two weeks, three weeks longer, you will be doing some laundry. Number one, you have to be okay with re-wearing things. You have one sweater or cardigan that you can use as a jacket. You can use it in the morning when it's chilly and in the evening when it's chilly coming out of dinner or whatever, but you don't use it during the day when it's warmer. You know, a lot of that kind of thing is very helpful that you can re-wear with many different things, but you're still going to get to the point where you will need to probably wash a thing or two. And either you can use the laundry surfaces that your hotel offers, and many times it's kind of expensive, so I would try to limit that if you can. You can hand wash in the sink of your bathroom, especially if you're staying in one place for a few days, and then that item can dry. Um, you do you in the way it works best for you, but yes, you may need to launder a few things. I've even known people that have purchased, um, let's say like underwear that they just buy something cheap for their trips and they use and throw, use and throw and use and throw it. So it's just, that's, it's like a disposable item. I've never done that, but that is an option, but you have to get a little tricky and so forth, especially if you're going somewhere hot and you're changing your top constantly. If you're, if it's a hot, sweaty kind of a place, um, you might need to just kind of plan in the budget to throw some money at the laundry people <laughs> down the street and get some things washed for the second half of your vacation. Um, and it's worth it. It's actually more worth it than having your luggage lost and you don't know where it is and you have to buy all new clothes. So there is that, but it is a con in that if you're staying for longer times, you will have to do laundry and find a way. And then as I touched on before, my last con is that 
your outfit diversity will be very limited. You can no longer have so many different color things going on or whatever. It's best to only have a couple pairs of shoes in different heights of the same color because they will all go with that, you know, like let's say your color scheme is black and white with a pop of color. You can do everything with that. That is the go-to thing. In the summer, I tend to do navy and white with a pop of color or two. And what, you can throw on a scarf that goes with anything and you can throw on the black and the white, you know, as your basic um, core outfit short sleeves, long sleeves, sweater, top, whatever. Everything goes with the jean jacket and then throw on the scarf for a pop of color. Throw on your bag that has a pop of color and that works so well. But that does make you limited to kind of looking the same the whole trip. <laughs> so if that's a problem for you, that is definitely going to be a con. But in my world and in my mind, the pros highly outweigh the cons, especially after you've done it two or three times and all of a sudden you get your aha moment where you're able to curate your items down to this perfect little bunch. Like I personally think that if I had someone all of a sudden that could take my giant luggage with me and I know I'm going to get it and it's just guaranteed it'll be there and I don't have to worry about it anymore, I still think I'd want to probably stay with my smaller situation because to me it makes all the rest of everything so much easier. So like I said, I will be, and I'm working on it now, trying to figure out what I'm bringing on my next trip and how I'm going to make it mix and match for the different things I'm doing. And it'll be everything from romantic dinners to hiking in possibly rain. So um, we'll see how it all goes and I will keep you posted. Stay tuned for more luggage and how I pack and that kind of thing videos. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so you don't miss anything. And if you are subscribed already, ring that bell next to the subscribe thing. I've had so many people say that they're not getting notifications of my videos anymore. So you just have to kind of ring that bell again. Um, which will give you the notifications. And I do appreciate it so, so much. Thank you guys. I need to start figuring out what I need to uh, pile up for packing. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.